Praise God, brothers and sisters. Today is Tuesday, April 11th, 2017. Um, it's about 6.30 p.m. where I am right now. And, um, you know, I just wanted to make a really short video to share some things with you and encourage you to think about some things as well. You know, Socrates, once upon a time, did say that the unexamined life is not worth living. And so every once in a while, I think we owe it to ourselves to examine our lives and think about where we've been, where we're headed, and where we currently are. And I think this is especially essential for us as Christians to do um, as we think about our walk with Christ and think back to the time we gave our lives to Jesus Christ and asked him to be Lord of our lives, looking back to then, how far have we come along in our walk? Are we still on fire for God? Do we still have that fast love and passion for God? Are we seeking him the way we did? Do we have that hunger for him? Or with time, have things cooled down to the point that now we've become lukewarm? It's a question to ask yourself. It's a question that I too have been asking myself. And my ultimate desire and goal is to always walk close to God. And I hope that that would be the same for you. But as you think about that, think about the ways in which you could draw closer to God. And I want to share with you a little story right now. But before I do, I have a question that I want you to think about. The question is, how much time do you think you have left? And what have you done for the kingdom? That's question number one. Question number two, if you were to die today, would you be ready to meet God? Mm -hmm. See, we tend to take things for granted a lot, right? We take it for granted that tonight we'll go to bed, tomorrow we'll wake up, next week we'll be alive, making plans, doing things. Next year, we'll go on that vacation that we've always wanted to go on. But what we don't realize is that we are on borrowed time. And at any one moment, we could die. We could die in our sleep. We could step out the door and something happens. You know, nobody knows when they're going to die. And so... We need to live our lives, and this is not to freak you out or anything, but we always need to live our lives with the end in mind. We always have to, we need to be able to live our lives and have that relationship with God where we know that at any one moment, if we were to meet him, we would be ready to meet him. We would be excited about meeting him. Now, you know, today I... I met with someone um, who was actually very devastated because their childhood friend had passed away suddenly. L literally, they got sick last week, and on Monday, they died. So this friend of mine was actually so disoriented and so devastated. They actually left work early and went back home and... And they were saying, you know, I feel really badly. I hope they didn't go to hell because I know that they were dabbling in the occult. So apparently this person um, who passed away was dabbling in the occult a lot, um, seeing psychics and mediums and consulting with all of these, you know, just pretty much engaged in, in what God says we should not be engaged in, which is the occult. And so this friend of mine actually happens to be born again. And he was lamenting and saying, oh, I really wish that I had said something. I wish that I had ministered to this person because now they're dead. It's too late. And I just, I just hope that they had changed their ways. See, so the thing is, once we die, that's it. And we don't realize that God is merciful and God is kind because all this time, all this time that we've been alive, it's like every day is an opportunity for us to put ourselves right with God. Every moment that we breathe is an opportunity for us to repent. 
But the moment we die, like the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to live and then judgment. So once we are on the other side, there's no amount of repenting that's going to help us. There's no amount of asking for forgiveness that's going to help us because now is the time. And honestly, you know, if you think about it, if today God said, I'm going to take your life away and you said, please give me more time, please give me more time. God might actually say, I've given you all this time. In the case of this uh, friend of mine or, you know, or the unsaved, the person who had passed away, it's like, I gave you all of 37 years of your life. You know, all of this time, what did you do? Did you even think to come to me? And so, brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you to always have the end in mind because neither you nor I know when we're going to depart from this world, but we should always be ready. We should always be ready to meet our Savior. You know, and the greatest lie that has been told so far by some preachers is that once you're saved, you're always saved. You have this guarantee, right? So salvation or getting saved becomes like a life insurance, pol like an afterlife insurance policy where people think, oh, once I give my life to Christ, I'm all set. I don't have to do anything else. I can just continue to live my life the way I live my life and everything is going to be okay once I die. I'm going to go to heaven. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible tells us that we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So working out our salvation is a process. It's a thing that we have to do on the daily. You know, and we can't honestly, you know, say that we love and serve God, but yet we live like the people in the world. Even Jesus said you can't serve God and mammon at the same time. So if you're serving God, then it has to be evident in the fruits of your life. And so brothers and sisters, if you think, if you've been living your life the way the heaven do and think, oh, I'm saved and I can still go out and do all these things and I'm good, you're not good. You have to put your right life with God, uh, uh, right with God. You have to now begin to align yourself to the will of God, to the ways of God, according to His Word. So read the Word of the Lord, and which is the Bible, and apply it to your life. Now, some other people think that, okay, maybe not once saved, always saved, but hey, you know, I go to church every Sunday, I go to fellowship every Wednesday, I tithe and, you know, and I serve in the church, I'm an usher in the church, or I sing in the choir, and that's all that's required of me. But that's not all that's required of you. See, God cares less about service than he does about the condition of your heart. Then he cares about the relationship that you would have with him that personal relationship. So it doesn't matter, you know, all of these things we do externally, that's pretty much what Jesus tended to be condemning about the Pharisees. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't do good works, you should do good works, you should serve the Lord in a public capacity, but that should not be the indicator of you being right with God. Because if you do all those things and wear those as a badge of honor and think that you deserve to go to heaven because you do all of these things, then you've missed the point completely. The whole idea here is that your heart has to be right before God. And that's why David was so loved by God because he was a man after God's own heart. Why? Because his heart was perfect before God. He was always praising God. He was always giving thanksgiving to the Lord. You know, the condition of his heart, he didn't, he wasn't filled with, you know, bitterness and unforgiveness. And so, Examine your lives, guys. You know, being right with God is not about the things you do out there. It's about the condition of your heart. It's about what's going on in your private life, inside your heart. Because you could still do all these good things and harbor unforgiveness. And we know the Bible is very clear. It says that if you don't forgive your brother, then God will not forgive you. Okay, if you don't love your brother, how can you say 
that you love, you don't love your brother who you see, but that you love God whom you've not seen. And so that would be being hypocritical, right? So the Lord commands us, actually in the book of Zechariah, which is where I am, I'm almost done with the Old Testament, by the way. And um, I want to read you what it says in Zechariah chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. It says, these are the things that you shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. So be truthful with one another. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. So we should always be truthful and be striving for peace. And then in verse 17, it says, And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. For these are the things that I hate. So let none of you imagine evil against his brother. God is telling us not to harbor negativity, bitterness, resentment, anger, rage, jealousy, envy, malice. You know, all of those things are toxic to the system and actually when god is telling you not to harbor these things he's doing it for your own good because those things are so toxic to the body that actually even studies are showing that unforgiveness can make you sick so see god is concerned with the condition of our hearts and how can you tell what condition your heart is in or the condition of the of the heart of another person is by sometimes the things that they say because the word of the lord says that the heart speaks that the mouth speaks what the heart is full of and jesus said that it's not the things that go into us that defile us but it's the things that come from within us that make us unclean it's the things that stem from inside the heart so the unexamined life is not worth living examine your life specifically examine your heart if you have any negativity inside any unforgiveness bitterness resentment towards other people or even towards yourself then you have to take that to the Lord and ask him to cleanse you of all of that and ask you and ask him to heal you of all of those things especially you know, if you're having a hard time with those feelings towards your own self, release and surrender everything to God. And God will sustain you because he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. I love you guys. I want you to contemplate eternity because eternity is a very long time. Read the word, apply the word, draw close to God, not just with your lips, but with your heart. Search your heart, search your hearts, people. And if there's anything in your heart that is not of God, any feelings towards other people that are not of God, any bad relationships that you might have right now, any bad blood you might have with your family members or your spouse or people at work, try to make peace. Seek peace within your gates, like the book, like Zechariah chapter 8 says. God bless you. God keep you safe until the morrow. And remember to always be thankful for the breath that you have. If you're watching this video, no matter how bad things are in your life, be thankful to God and praise the Lord that you're still alive, that you still have your senses to hear, that his presence is still in this world, that God has not departed from this world, he is still in this world because there is still some good in this world. Because separation from God is the worst thing that could possibly happen. I love you guys. Take care, touch base with you later. And don't forget, this Sunday is actually Easter. So we know that Jesus came to die on the cross for our sins. That whosoever shall believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. That is our ultimate gift. So let's be thankful for the gift. Let's be thankful for the blood of Yeshua. Let's love one another. Let's be peaceful. Let's make peace. And above all things, let's work out our salvation with fear and trembling, coming before the Lord, repenting 
all, you know, every day, every moment we have, singing praises to him and seeking his face. Take care. Bye.